Welcome to the course on training and development. We are on module 11 where we are discussing on the future trends of training and development. In the lecture 4, we are going to discuss on the trends of new technology used in training. As you must have seen like we are discussing much on technology in this sessions. We, are, we have discussed, introduced technology, use of technology in training on session uh, like module 9 sessions and also like while discussing the from the start of like 11 also we are discussing technology because we have to understand like the future is moving towards that and we have to get ourselves accustomed to it we have to understand it get ourselves trained on it and welcome it in our training deliverables instructions course content development, understand the nuances of it and be prepared for it. So here we are discussing on the major trends of new technology which are used in training. So this part of the lecture session will be held on the trends of new technologies used in training and development. The increasing use of new technologies to deliver training and to store and communicate means that trainers must be technologically literate. That means they must understand the strengths and weaknesses of new technologies and implementation issues such as overcoming users' resistance to change. Many companies have created positions like knowledge managers, information officer, IT expert, whose job is to identify reliable knowledge and make sure it is accessible to the employees. What is the future of workplace training? What we have discussed earlier also, a hybridized form of learning is slowly becoming the normal method of teaching in most training environments, especially in the workplace. Businesses are beginning to accept like the work from home culture that adopting blended learning, combining traditional face-to-face -face learning and teaching with electronic and online media such as videos, self-paced online modules and digital aids. While advancement in technology are phasing out outdated methods and structures, they are also creating new pathways to propel the world forward. The workplace will, no have, will really have no other path to take. Now, what are the various ways of using new technologies in training? The latest HR management software can be used to manage employee career development path. Training can be developed and administered completely online, that is sometimes even without the assistance of an instructor. LMS can also serve as a repository for optional training materials allowing employees to self-serve and get a request additional training as needed. Online training can be made interactive including quizzes to assess understanding. Training can be administered by way of mobile applications allowing individuals to complete training truly on the go. Now, what are the future of new technologies in training? Some computer-based training software which are commonly used in training are Canvas, a cloud-based learning management software, Kahoot, it, it is also an LMS and it helps to create online games, interact with learners, etc. Google Classroom, it is a cloud-based LMS, a part of Google Apps for Education. Adobe Connect, it is a web conferencing solution 
that allows users to conduct online meetings, webinars, and interactive training sessions. The sum of the future of new technologies in training also like talent LMS. It is the LMS built for training success. Designed to get a yes from everyone, it's where great teams and companies go to grow. Articulate 360. Storyline 360 is a cloud-based solution designed to help organizations produce and publish interactive video-based e-learning courses. Schoology is a cloud-based learning management solution specializing in curriculum management, course instruction, and system-wide resource sharing and collaboration. Blackboard Collaborate. It is an online collaborative learning solution designed primarily for elementary and high schools, higher education and government facilities. We have discussed about different forms of new technologies in earlier lecture. Here we may discuss the future scope of each technology which are used in training. The first technology which is becoming very important that is the mobile technology. There are increasing trend that almost a larger part of online marketing is, views, is viewed on smartphones. With the increasingly remote nature of education and work, academic institutions and employers have needed to rely on online learning platforms to help train employees and teach students. The mobile technology is worth investing because it is flexible, it works with micro learning, it is mostly personalized and so individualized learning program is best suited like when it is mobile technology based, merges best practices with technology, it is cost effective in nature, it makes learning fun. It is more engaging and versatile. It is preferred method for users. Courses are completed faster than in any other device. Second is the video based training. The, in the digital world in which we live today, the web browsers offer us the ability to mix and match media in one page. Watching a video becomes only one part of the learning experience for video based learning. Videos can become more engaging by inclusion of simple poster frames, scrubber, thumbnails, chapter markers, playlists, etc. It can be more interactive with the addition of explanations, additional pictures, tables, questionnaires, etc. Video-based training and learning are on demand and available to anyone and instructional designers aren't the ones leading the change. The video-based learning includes TikTok, Snapchat and stories in a new light. What used to take hours and hours of listening to video and typing the words is now done with the click of a button like the YouTube videos. From the e-learning perspective, if the power of videos and interactions are clubbed, it sure has the scope to bring about better learner engagement, increased retention and in the long run, increased performance and business growth. The virtual environment and avatars. An avatar is the graphic representation of the self in a given physical medium that other users can see or interact with in a virtual environment. Every day, millions of users interact, collaborate and form relationship with each other through the avatars in an online environment. The 3D worlds allow people to experience human social life in an environment in which people interact with a body of their design. Virtual reality modeling language or VRML 97 version allows to create virtual worlds by the internet commonly accessed through World Wide Web. HTML5 and Responsive Design 
HTML5 and responsive design and other technologies allow us to create a new form of multimedia centered on video based learning. Where multimedia used to mean a special experience developed in special formats like CD-ROM, today it means all the media for all possible content consumption preference. A browser or mobile app based experience is the norm. HTML5 and whatever comes next is the platform for all future e-learning including the video based learning. The HTML5 format is compatible with a multitude of devices including computers, tablets and smartphones. The format is advantageous and engaging for consumers because of its accessibility and convenience. It is the ease of, ease of use and borderless portability. It will allow students to take courses without worrying about downloading plugins so that they can progress freely. So what we find over here, it's more flexibility, more of transferability, more of like switching between the devices, which will become the trend in the future and which are going to stay. Because when people are using various devices, they could be in various localities. So they may, what ultimately is like whether we are learning, how we are learning, through what medium we are learning, we need to be more flexible about it and in order to give that flexibility the technology should be such like it is like it it is like adjustable in all kind of devices and that's where html5 is going to uh, is has got its importance automation and adaptive learning Adaptive learning technology has been considered among top five deployed in 2020. The new adaptive learning application has been evolved to like faster, become faster both in terms of capacity and data speed, closer in terms of moving cloud-based computer functions closer to the network age, smarter via automation analytics, artificial intelligence, and virtualization capabilities safer with technologies that increase awareness of network health to proactively address issues before they occur. Now, what is an adaptive network? Recently, this network has been coming up with a combination of programmable infrastructure highly instrumented physical and virtual network elements in a multi-domain. Analytics and intelligence, machine learning based platform that leverages streaming network telemetry, software control and automation that intelligently orchestrates multi-vendor components, automates manual network processes, services, Highly experienced technical and professional services with proven methodologies are requested to help customers build, operate and continually improve their networks. Big data, we have discussed this earlier, we will be discussing the more on the like its future scope and where it is going to be used implications here in details. Education is progressively moving from one size fits all approach to precision education or personalized learning. The dynamic and stochastic learning, the outcome of which involves some randomness and uncertainty, is gradually becoming the trend in modern machine learning techniques. Data are informatively and qualitatively balanced and adopting. AI systems in order to avoid implicit biases that may propagate into algorithms trained on such data. In a digitally driven knowledge economies, traditional formal education system are undergoing drastic changes or even a paradigm shift. 
Lifelong learning is quickly being adopted and implemented through online and project based learning schemes. Collaboration between academia and industry as well as balanced human and machine learning approaches are pertinent for vocational education. New technology based platforms for training. Two new platforms have recently launched and have gained a bit of attention, so it's worth taking a look at them. Byte. It is e-learning courses that takes us back to the looping video fun of Vine. Tangy. It is a YouTube style platform specially for crafters. All content is instructional content by and for makers. Individualized learning by using artificial intelligence to create adaptive learning systems and intelligent tutoring systems and by using technology to organize and implement modular competency based learning. It is enhancing learner engagement by using game based learning and immersive simulations that rely on engaging incentive based platforms as well as highly realistic learning settings to maximize engagement. Time on task and competency reinforcement. These also in include use of three dimensional uh, and augmented reality technologies. Promoting highly interactive social learning by using Web 2.0 social media and other collaborative approaches as a way to generate both the learning content and the learning environment like virtual worlds. Mining data to shape learning opportunities beyond a given TBL application by analyzing individual as well as big data to better understand the learning process and inform TBL design and synthesizing data to create transferable e-portfolios for learners to showcase their skills. Another important source which is helping to access, improving access and scalability of the learners is by using open educational resources and publicly available instructional materials in conjunction with the increased availability of mobile learning technologies and applications. So these are again some of the references that we have used for the slides. This lecture session was to again generate our awareness about the different learning uh, options or technologies which are possible, the uses of it, we need to uh, like if if we really want to know much deeper about it, it's, it, we can go in understanding from other sources also like the references that has been given here, we can read through these slides or refer to those materials, go for your own Google search to find more details about it. You can do some courses on these techniques also because it's always better to do a hands-on training on how to like use these things which will like be complementing your learning from this uh, module and because giving you hands-on experience on this thing is beyond the scope of this course but it is always uh, like advised, it is always suggested. Like if you are reading about these technologies, it is, uh, it is advisable that you also may take up some courses where uh, you can know about the details of it, have, have some experience, do some experiential exercises where you can get to learn these things like, uh, like hands-on and experience it which will help you to use these things in a much better way in your real life situations. Thank you for now. We will meet you with another discussion sessions on the future trends of training and development in the next upcoming lecture. Thank you.